bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit up to $250, get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back, all from Daily Racing Form most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Saturday, May the 15th. Well, of course, it's the second jewel in racing's Triple Crown, the Preakness Stakes. Let's take a look at the field. We're going a mile and three sixteenths at Pimlico, and you can download free Formulator Pass performances for the Preakness on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us, Bob Baffert has the two favorites in the race, Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit, Concert Tour, the winner of the Rebel Stakes. A lot of controversy surrounding Baffert right now. Does that affect your handicapping in the slightest? Uh, no. I, I mean, listen, I, I don't think it can really affect how you handicap the race. Then obviously there's a bigger story going on um, outside of this race. That's probably for another time. It's not what we do here on this show. Um, I, you know, suspect that Medina Spirit, they're going to let him run. I suspect that he'll show up and run his race. And to me, almost as big a story and one that, you know, obviously won't get talked about now is just the fact that once again, um, it feels like the trainers and the owners of all the good three-year-olds feel like they don't have to run in the Preakness if they don't win the Derby. And so, you know, we have a race here where the horses, they felt like they could give Medina Spirit a real run for his money on Saturday, have decided not to show up. We saw Medina Spirit take them all the way in the Kentucky Derby. Timeform U.S. projects a similar situation in the early going. They have Medina Spirit up front, Concert Tour up close. Concert Tour is fast, but Concert Tour is also trained by Bob Baffert. And it's hard to imagine the two Baffert-trained horses canceling themselves out on the front. I mean, it really is, uh, um, although it's also hard to imagine that they would enter um, concert toured in this race and then take him completely out of his game and not show speed. I don't know what's going to happen up front. And I do think Medina spirit will go forward again. D Wayne Lucas is here. The great D Wayne Lucas with the number one Ram, a son of triple crown winner, American Pharaoh. This horse dropped into a $50,000 maiden claimer to notch his maiden win. And then he came back and he scored most recently at Churchill Downs. Let's go back to the Oaklawn race. Maiden claimer back on April the 16th, Ram not exactly knocking heads with the toughest competition in this spot, but he got it done. His confidence is sky high, and he has a hint of early speed. Yeah, he does. His last two races are the best of his career. He was a fairly easy winner of this race, Dan, um, off of a really good trip. Um, listen, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Obviously, he has to improve by a lot. He's going to be a huge price in this race for a trainer who's uh, won this race a time or two. Keep me in mind, the number two was a very good two-year-old for trainer Robertino Diodoro. He was third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He bounced back out of that race to win a graded stakes at Churchill Downs. This year, the fates have not been as kind. Three races, three off-the-board finishes. Not exactly a clean trip in the Derby, but this is the kind of horse that just needs a lot of pace because he doesn't have a lot of speed. Yeah, it's a big problem for this horse because his running style puts him immediately behind the eight ball. And of course, that's what happened in the Kentucky Derby, a race that um, obviously did not set up for closers at all. Dan, this horse was way back out of it. He got forced very wide into the stretch. All in all, I thought he kind of ran a deceptively good race in that spot. Um, but it just feels like this Preakness isn't going to set up for him at all again. Medina Spirit, after being taken off the pace in the Santa Anita Derby and finishing a good second behind Rock Your World, I think they realize he's at his best when he controls the issue, almost like authentic for Bob Baffert last year. Medina Spirit went right to the front in the Derby. He took on three strong challenges in the stretch. He kept right on going, and those three strong challengers in the stretch are not here to face him in the Preakness. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest advantage he has going for him right now, Dan. The field that he's going to face on Saturday um, doesn't match up at all with the field that he faced in Kentucky. He beat a much better group of horses last time. Um, and listen, let's be honest. He did it with the best trip in the race. Uh, he got a great ride from Johnny V. He got absolutely um, control of that pace up the backstretch with a couple of long shots close to him early. Um, and he was very game through the stretch to turn away three pretty good horses um, as you've already mentioned, those three horses are not here. This horse stands out on form in this race. Any of his last five buyer speed figures would qualify as this Preakness's best last number. The number four crowded trade goes out for Chad Brown, and he is fresh. He only made his 
third lifetime start in the Wood Memorial, a race we're going to take a look at right now. And he ran quite well, considering it was his first time around two turns. Now, I thought this horse hung a little bit in his second lifetime start, the Gotham, but he ran well in the Wood Memorial, and Chad has done this before. He ran cloud computing in the Wood Memorial. He got beat there. He skipped the Kentucky Derby. He came back and won the Preakness. Crowded trade, an interesting new shooter. I guess he is, Dan. He does have talent. I, I do think he's a, a pretty talented racehorse. I think the question with him is distance at this point. You know, you don't know how far he wants to go. I think he's run well in all three of his starts. He hasn't gotten out of the gate well in any of his three starts so far, so that could be a concern for him. You know, also, Dan, when you go back and watch the wood, and, and he did run fine there, his only, only his third career start, but he um, moved after Dynamic 1 moved in that race. He did move before the winner. Um, but I thought all in all, he got a pretty good trip in that race. Wasn't good enough. And the one, two finishes of the wood, they were nowhere in the derby. The number five midnight bourbon arguably had one of the worst trips in the Kentucky Derby, considering that he has a lot of tactical speed and he got banged around out of the gate and could never find his usual forward position. Now, if you recall our time form U.S. pace projector, they have Midnight Bourbon sitting in third. And I think that would be a very good spot for this Colt. He's growthy. He's very consistent. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if he runs well. I also have a feeling he's going to be kind of a wise guy horse for the anti-Bafferts. I kind of feel the same way about him. Dan. I'll, I'll give him the excuse, I guess, in the Derby last time. He did look like he maybe got brushed from both sides coming out of the gate. I also felt like he just didn't have the speed to get forward that day. And once he didn't get forward, he was not going to be effective. Um, he can win this race, I guess. He certainly can be competitive, even if he doesn't win. I don't know. I just wasn't really that into him this time. It feels like he's going to take some money in here, and I don't want him. Coming from the clouds, most likely, is the number six, Rom Bauer. That's the style he utilized when he won the El Camino Real Derby over to PETA at Golden Gate in his seasonal debut. Now in the bluegrass. The pace was very, very slow. And lo and behold, there's Ron Bauer pretty close to the pace. I don't really think that's his game, sitting up close and trying to sprint home with two horses that have a tactical edge on him. He's going to hope for some pace. He's a likable horse. I think he's rounding into form. We'll see if he gets the right setup. I agree with all that stuff, Dan. I mean, um, all in all, you know, they just did what they had to do in the in the bluegrass last time and kept him closer to a slow pace. Um, and it just didn't help his, him at all there that the two horses that ran one, two were both better than he is. He was never going to beat them. I thought he ran fine. It was another step in the right direction. He'll get a different trip this time. Maybe he improves again. I can see him getting a piece of this at a price. From Japan comes the number seven, France Go de Aina. We saw this horse in the UAE Derby. I don't think he had a great trip in that race. He didn't break very well. He was in a little bit of traffic, but he also didn't do a lot of running. And I thought that that race just came back very weak this year for some reason. He didn't beat strong competition in Japan, and supposedly he had a very eventful Wednesday morning at Pimlico, bolting, dumping his jockey, and running off for a while. Uh, yeah, um, it, it sounds like he was no worse for the wear after that incident, um, so we'll see what happens with him on Saturday. I Listen, we've talked about this before. I follow your lead with these Japanese horses, and it seems like um, you don't really like this one that much. And I agree with your take on his UAE Derby, Dan. I wanted to give him the excuse. He didn't break great in that race. Um, they had him sort of over behind horses for a really long time until they got into the stretch. But, man, he got clear, I thought, with plenty of time to do something. And he just didn't really run. And it's hard to imagine a triple crown race being a prep. But the New York Racing Association is offering, I believe, a million-dollar bonus for a Japanese-trained horse if they win the Belmont. This race might be a prep for the Belmont. Unbridled Honor is the number eight for trainer Todd Pletcher, and this is a horse who's still learning. Let's watch his last race, the grade three Lexington. Big pace helped Unbridled Honor in this race because he, like Rom Bauer, like Keep Me In Mind, doesn't have a lot of early speed. He got the right setup. We see him just change leads outside the eighth pole, and he comes with a good run to finish second. Mike, this is a horse I think that needs pace and race luck, but I do think he's a late developing type. Yeah, he could just be a late developing type. He'd certainly, you know, took a pretty big step forward in that Lexington. How much the uh, the really fast pace and the sloppy track had to do with it, I guess, would be the question, Dan. Because prior to that, he had not run a race that would put him even close. And the, even in this Preakness, which isn't a good Preakness, it still would give him absolutely no chance. We'll see if he's really as good as he seemed to be um, in his most recent start. 
Risk taking at 15 to one might be the value play on the morning line. We talked about crowded trade and comparing him to Chad's Preakness winner, Cloud Computing. Maybe risk taking is a better comparison. This horse really appreciates distance. He got good when they stretched him out to a mile and an eighth. In the Wood Memorial, he got a lot of dirt kicked in his face. He was up relatively close to a fast pace. And again, he underperformed in the wood. Cloud Computing got beat seven in the wood and came back to win the Preakness. Risk taking got beat six and three quarters. Yeah, he didn't run his best race last time. That was obviously a disappointment for a horse who was the favorite in the wood. He got a little bit headstrong, I thought, anyway, early in that wood memorial. Never really settled, and then he didn't fire at all. So he was disappointing for sure. Um, but as you said, he does really like distance. I liked his uh, maiden win going uh, nine furlongs. At the end of his two-year-old year, he wasn't even three yet when he won the Withers, and I thought he ran well that day also with an 89 buyer. I don't know, Dan. We'll, we'll see if he can improve again and get the right trip in this race, but I thought he was the sort of interesting horse at a price. I think one could make the case that the number 10 concert tour is the most naturally talented horse in this year's Preakness. And I think you could also make the case that his rebel victory two starts back was the most visually impressive Kentucky Derby prep of 2021. Then he came back in this race, the Arkansas Derby, where he was expected to dominate and go into Churchill Downs on the first Saturday in May as the favorite. He gets beat here. But looking back on the race, he got caught in a pretty fast pace duel going a mile and an eighth for the first time. And maybe he won't have to work so hard to obtain forward position here. Uh, maybe not. Um, we'll, we'll see, Dan. I, I, you know, um, as, as far as those two, um, you know, questions that you posited earlier, that, that this horse might be the most naturally talented, all those things, that, that might be true. Um, it's not something that I believe. I don't personally, I don't like any of this horse's races. His rebel it was visually impressive. It got a decent figure. He beat a horrendous field that day. Um, and then he came back last time and he was just terrible. I'm not giving him the excuse that he was in a fast duel. He got out finished for second by Caddo River. Um, he was bad last time. Uh, maybe he's the most likely horse to upset Medina Spirit in this Preakness, but I don't like this horse. And I don't think you take him at the short price as the second choice if you don't like him. And I'm afraid uh, you're not going to use them in your picks as we yeah. throw up our top selections for the Preakness. And again, he just ticks the boxes, speed, pace, and class. Let's put the controversy aside from now. If he breaks, he's probably going to control this race. And if he runs back to his last three or four races, he's going to be very tough. He, of course, being Medina Spirit. Yeah, I mean, that's the main takeaway when you're just handicapping the race, Dan, on form. He sort of towers over this field. Um, based on his recent races. It's not a good Preakness. Um, you know, the, ma the major three-year-olds didn't show up again for this race. Medina Spirit did. He's way the horse to beat in here. I'm trying to get risk taken in there with him. Like you, I'm trying to get these shorter priced horses out of the exacta. Maybe unbridled spirit for Pletcher's just improving at the right time. I think this horse wants the distance. He's going to come running late. Maybe he can split these two Baffert horses for me. 3957 for Mike, 3810 for me. It's the Preakness on Saturday at Old Hilltop. Good luck.